Lord have mercy, all these books. They're sliding everywhere. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Savannah and y'all know I used to do makeup videos, but not anymore because I became a mom in 2021. Not only did I become a mom, I became a stay-at-home mom. So life really did a 360 for me. And the one way I got through postpartum, all the stuff that comes along with that and being a stay-at-home mom, being so young and not having so many friends, it's it was rough. It was a rough transition and I was very depressed. Reading is the one thing that got me through it all. I just love reading and I want to speak Spread my love of reading. I miss filming videos. I miss creating content. So I thought, let's try it, okay? I've got this motherhood thing down somewhat. I love watching other YouTubers. I watch Sarah Caroli, Destiny Sidwell, Daily Fam, Elite Reading, Steph Bohr. Am I forgetting anybody? I don't think so. And I also love Book Talk. I'm over on Book Talk if you want to follow me. I'm just going to call my channel Bookish Baby Mama because honestly, that's me. <laughs> I am indeed a baby mama and I love books. So bookish baby mama, there you go. Got really creative for that one. I love watching reading wrap ups. So I figured what's the most perfect way to start a bookish channel? We'll do a reading wrap up. So we're gonna talk about all the books I read in April. I really had to look at my phone to see what month we were in now, okay? I don't know about y'all, but April felt like the longest motherfucking month of my life. Like it just dragged on and I feel like maybe it had to do with, like I had a lot of shit going on I had stuff I needed to do and it was stressful. So I felt like I didn't really get a lot of reading done this month. I picked up two books this month and I didn't read one of them and the other I am so working on and it's just dragging on but I've also read some thick books. So let's get into this. So these are all the books I read in the month of April. I read seven books and as you can see four of those seven they are thick okay. I'm in my thick book girly era I guess you could say. I tried to put these in order but I'm not honestly quite sure what if I if these are right. I don't know if this is the right order but I, I guessed and I hoped I'm right. Starting off with the first book I read and I know this one is correct because I loved this book okay. I read Praise by Sarah Kate and oh my god this book. I love this book. I ate it up. It was so fucking good. It was so smutty. I'm a smut girl. I love me smutty books and this book was just, it was everything. You know the song Russ came out with? That's nasty. That's the song. That song belongs to this book. Anderson Grant, I loved him so much. Charlie was his good girl and he always called her a good girl. This book might have also made me realize I may have a praise kink. Hopefully my family's not watching this video. I love this. Some people don't like it because it is a ex-boyfriend's dad trope and a lot of people don't like that. It has an age gap, obviously. I... I got daddy issues. <laughs> Wow, I'm really putting myself out there. But it was just so good. I mean, a little taboo, but personally, I love it. I love fucked up shit. So I love this book. I ate it right the fuck up. Honestly, I'm gonna give it four stars because I'm still thinking about Emerson Grant and his fucking club. He owns a sex club and like they have all kinds of kinks there. You can go there and explore your sexuality. And I just love watching Charlie come into herself. She went from this shy girl who didn't feel like she was ever enough to this bad bitch who was like, yeah, I'm gonna sit on the throne and let you eat me out. Yeah, it was crazy. That was a good ride. I loved that book and I can't wait to read the next one in the series. <laughs> If you are a family member, turn this video off. It is not for you, okay? The next book I read is Cursed Fates. The Zodiac Academy series has me in a choco. I'm obsessed with this series. I'm eating it the fuck up. I'm like so impressed with myself because every book is like 600 pages and the chapters are long as book. But here I am, still enjoying it, eating it up, loving it. Honestly, I read this book, I feel like, forever ago. Like, I feel like I can't even remember what the fuck happened in it because it was so long ago. But I do recall that there was a reverse harem in this book and that was my first one. That was a little, it was crazy. I had a good time though. I loved it. I'm trying to remember what this was about, so just just give me a second. I really have nothing to say. I feel like I don't remember. Oh, I do remember now. Okay. A lot of shit went down in this book. This book kind of hurt me in a way that I was not expecting. It left on the biggest cliffhanger ever. I would give this book three stars just because some of the aspects of the book really had me like, no. And then some aspects I just can't even recall. Three stars, but it made me want to jump right into the next book, which is book six, Faded Thrones. And oh my God, this book. 
I am so scared to read book seven, guys. Like, I'm terrified to read book seven. I don't want to give too much out about this series because I am so far deep into it. I can't really tell y'all what's going on without giving shit away. Oh my god, I don't even know if I want to go to the next book because I'm terrified. I need somebody to talk to about this because the way it ended, I was not expecting that and I'm very unwell from it. The Perfect Marriage. I feel like you can't see that cover. Oh, there we go. I... I really thought I was gonna enjoy this book and I just did not. So Sarah Morgan, she's a lawyer and her husband actually ends up cheating on her with his mistress at their lake house that they own together. And she ends up defending her husband in court over the person that who was killed, obviously his mistress. And I just, ugh, I really did not like this book. I don't know if I'm just not a thriller girly. Like I like a thriller here and there, but this was just the trial era. Like I loved the trial era girl. I love the trial aspect in this book, but I just felt like it was dragged on to a point of like, I get it. Let's get this the fuck on. Like, like I want to know who did it. I don't want to keep going back and forth right now. And honestly, I'm kind of pissed at myself that I didn't see who the killer was because it's kind of obvious. It just wasn't giving. I didn't like the writing style either because at one point, Adam, who is the husband, he's like talking about how he wishes he was an aunt. So he, he didn't have to go through what he was going through. And I was just like, where the fuck did that come from? Like, it was so out of pocket to me. And there was one other time, Sarah was like running out of the building, the police station after she talked to Adam. And she was like, something about the world came in and I was just like what the fuck is going on where am I why why I do I would give it two stars honestly I liked the trial aspect I liked the lawyer aspect but uh, the rest of it wasn't vibing with it and I read Wretched by Emily McIntyre. This is the Never After series. Oh my god. I love this series. It's like a dark romance series and it's all like a retelling. Like this one's The Wizard of Oz. The first one's Peter Pan. The second one's Lion King. I love the idea. I love the aspect. I loved how this author like put little wrinkles of every movie in it. You know what I mean? Like, I thought this one was really fun because Evelina is the bad guy. She's the villain. Normally it's the men in these books who are the villain, the bad guys, and good guys guy is obviously, I don't even remember his name, Nicholas. And he has to go undercover to help figure out where this heroin is coming from, but they don't call it heroin, they call it, I don't even remember what, the, poppies, I think? Because heroin or opioids come from poppy flowers. I did not know that when I read this book. So you learn something when you read, girl. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Even if you're reading smut, you, you can learn something. But yeah, she was making drugs for her family. She was in charge of like the drug car cartel for her family. And he was coming in undercover to figure out who's making this drug and where the fuck they're coming from and little did he know he falls in love with the drug dealer a lot of shit went down in this book i really enjoyed it i thought it was fun and when i first read it i was like eh i think this one's my least favorite but now that i'm thinking back on it i'm like no i really fucks with this i loved evelina's evelina's evelina book I loved her character and their last name is Westerly and Dorothy is her sister and there was just fun little sprinkles throughout the mix of the story like the yellow brick road I don't even talk the yellow brick road was like leading back to the house where she made the opioids or whatever and it was just I will give this one probably 3.5 stars I enjoyed it but I didn't enjoy it as much as the other ones and that's my personal opinion <laughs> such a mess. Then I tried to read Billionaire Bargain. It's the Billionaire Bachelors series. It's by Alexandra Bishop and I did not, I did not enjoy this book at all halfway through. I was like, what the fuck is even happening anymore? Because I just felt like this book was, it's short. So it's only like 230 pages, but it's just too fast. You know, it's kind of like not insta lovey, but like it was just too fast. Maybe I will go back and read it, but I'm just not in the mood for it anymore. It's about this girl named Ariana and her dad has addictions and gambling problem and she is trying to like pay off their debt and get them out of that situation and her dad just keeps digging a deeper hole and she's like busting her ass working two jobs and he's just blowing all the money down the toilet basically. So then Emerson, no not Emerson, that's a different book babe. Different man. What is this one's name? Marcus Blackstone. He is a billionaire and he tells 
her dad, hey, if you give me your daughter, I'll pay your bills, bitch. So he's like, say less, say less. Here's my daughter, take my daughter and do what you want with her and call it a day. She's working for Marcus as a maid and he is like very strange and she notices he has blood on one of his five piece suits and he's making her clean it off and he's like, if you fuck this up, you're fired. And she has nowhere to go because he's like, if you get fired, I'm gonna kill you and your dad. So she's like, well, fuck, like what am I to do? As she's staying there, as she's getting to know this man and cleaning his house, weird shit is happening as in like all his employees are leaving. This one girl she gets to know who works with her is leaving. Like it's just very strange. And then all of a sudden, halfway through this book and you're like, okay, Marcus Blackstone is very standoffish. There's like no relationship between him and Ariana. Yet all of a sudden they're fucking. And I'm like, wait, what? And then there's a son not a son it's his nephew who comes into the picture and he's like 18 years old or something and he's like if you want a fun ride come meet me ariana or something i don't know i was so confused at this point so i just put this book down and i never picked it back up and i still don't know how i feel about it but the book is signed which is pretty cool and i got it from the half price bookstore that's where i got it from now my favorite read that i've read this month i might even be my favorite year read. what girl you good might even be my favorite read of the year i finally did it guys i read binding 13 and at first i was like nah i'm not gonna read it because it's just not for me i'm a dark romance girly i like fucked up shit give me the crazy shit and i'm gonna read it but give me something sweet and lighthearted. but this isn't even lighthearted, so i don't even know what i'm talking about but i just knew this was like gonna be a situation where the guy is good and i like my men bad okay <laughs> so i read this book please check the tip what Please check the trigger warnings before you go into this book. It's a very deep and dark read. Maybe that's why I like it because the shit that happens in this book is wild. So you have Shannon Lynch, who's the main girly, and then you have Johnny Kavanaugh, who's the baby daddy. He's not really a baby daddy, but he is sexy. I love Johnny Kavanaugh. I think he's one of my top boyfriends. So he's a rugby player and she is the shy girl who gets bullied and is just, she doesn't have a great home life. She has a lot of baggage, a lot of trouble that follows her. And Johnny is a save me kind of guy. He wants to help her. He just feels drawn to Shannon in a way he can't explain. And I don't want to go too deep into this. Trust me. You want to read this, okay? It's really fucking good. They end up falling for each other and you just go on this amazing journey with them. The found family aspect in this book is so good. But I feel like you have to read the second book, which is Keeping 13, to really get all the feels. Like, I read the first one and I was like, okay, I really did enjoy it, but like, it's a slow burn, bitch. A slow, slow slow burn okay it's just really slow so then of course right after i read binding 13 i had to read keeping 13 because i needed to find out binding 13 left off on such a fucking cliffhanger and no one fucking told me that and i was like i don't even have the next book bitch like i have to order this and wait for it to come in and i am so unwell i need to find out what the fuck happens so as soon as i got keeping 13 i dropped all the other books i was reading at the time which is why i think i didn't want to finish billionaire's bargain or broken heart or once upon a broken heart this was so i don't cry when i read like i seriously think there's something wrong with me because i will read the most saddest fucked up shit like i read if he had been with me which maybe i don't know a lot of people said they cried for that book i shed one fucking tear but this book, I saw. I sobbed so hard. Maybe I was. it was because I was on my period, but also like the shit that happened in this book. And I just feel like you get to know the characters so fucking well. So when you see what happens in this book, you're just like, no, like that's my family too, bitch. Like that happened to me too. Like I'm unwell. Oh my God, this book was so good. And I loved everyone in this book, except for Shannon's mom and dad. Fuck y'all. Also, Darren, kind of hate you too, man, but I don't know, maybe you'll redeem yourself later on. I loved Gipsy. Gipsy is my favorite. I want his book so damn bad, and I can't wait to read Joey and Oaf Afa? Uh, Ophie's story. I cannot say her name, and I know the author gives you like a little paper that tells you how to pronounce things. There's no help in me, okay? Ifa. Aoife? Aoife is what I'm going with. Joey and Aoife. I can't wait to read their story, okay? Joey goes through some shit, but yeah. Fucking obsessed. I rated these five stars. I don't know if I've been telling you what I rated the rest of the books. Wretched, I've rated 3.5. Yeah, I told y'all. I told you. Okay, wow, my brain is really everywhere. Please hold on. Yeah, but if you're gonna read anything I just talked about, read these. I know they're thick and they're intimidating, but I promise it's very much worth it.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe to my channel. If you don't know hard feelings, but I'm just saying, be very much appreciated. Please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I think I said that, but I honestly don't know anymore. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>